Uh, hello everyone, my name is Nemanja Stojanović and today I will talk to you about some object detection projects I made to figure out as much as possible about this topic. So in a previous company uh, they assigned me some tasks related to computer vision and object detection so I was like why shouldn't I make my own projects to figure out as much as I can about this. And so let's say, oh, okay. So this, uh, this presentation, in this presentation, I won't talk about talk much about the technical stuff. Mostly, it will be demos and my progress. What did I learn and what did I achieve uh, to real to resolve these problems that were in this task in a previous company. So, as probably all, all of you know, uh, image is just a bunch of pixels and each pixel can be represented as mostly in RGB color space, which each color usually has allocated one byte. So each pixel can be represented as three bytes, one byte for red, one byte for green and one byte for blue. And when you combine these uh, values, you can represent pretty much all the colors. So on the left image you can see grayscale uh, grayscale image uh, and it has just one channel so each pixel can be represented as just one value and you can see these values on the left well you can't but there is just you know th there are values here and uh, the basic of image processing are these convolutions uh, which means uh, applying these kernels or as probably you know filters these filters are just uh, matrices that you apply to this image. Uh, you can see one example down there. It's a 3 times 3 matrix. It has minus 1 and 8. And when you apply this filter to the image on the left, with usage of this convolution, you can get image that looks like that on the right. So the easiest way to explain these convolutions is to show you the demo. It's, it's very simple, actually. There is that kernel on the right or filter, whatever, it has some values. So you go through image, get an area around each pixel, and multiply all the values with these values from a kernel, and then you generate the next value in the middle. So if there is values uh, there that are one ninth in all of those uh, pixel positions, that means you will get the area around each pixel and average the value. So basically you are blurring the image. Uh, if you just if you make kernel bigger, let's say five times five, and each value in this kernel is one over twenty-five, that means you are going through image, getting the surrounding pixels, get all those values, uh, sum them, and divide by twenty-five. So you are blurring image even more. So these are like basic representation of what convolutions are and how to use them. You can use it for blurring, sharpening. There are fun to use kernels like you can make edge detection and so on. So uh, because there are a lot of these, I wanted to you know get familiar with object uh, uh, image processing as much as I can. Uh, there is OpenCV library in Python that you can do for all of these. And while I was playing with it, I needed my own project to practice. And there is a very simple example you can make by combining some of these kernels of filters so you can cartoonize your image, make image look like uh, someone has drawn it. So this is a first my uh, application I wrote. So what's happening here? You have 3D scene on the left. And uh, what I'm doing here, every time you stop moving your scene, uh, event is initiated and I get the frame buffer frame buffer you can think of it as just an image that will be drawn to the screen. So once I get it, I convert it to NumPy array, at that point I can do almost anything with it. And then I apply these filters to get this cartoonized look. Uh, and there is small GUI written in Py side, so basically you can make a colored version or black and white version. And as you can see there is uh, edge detection. So I found the edges, the gradients on the image, and exaggerate these edges by drawing black lines. So this was like the first fun project to me that I could make with image processing. <laughs> but main task was to do object detection. So uh, 
previous step is important because when you do object detection, you want to do as much as possible pre-processing and post-processing. You want to give to your neural network as less data as possible. So at this state, uh, when I try to make first object detection, uh, in my pr previous company, uh, they, they'll be doing, uh, they're in automotive industry. And as you probably know, uh, there are a lot of standards because human life can get in danger. So all of this has to work really well because someone can die. You cannot have object detection in vehicles. What if you make a mistake, someone can die. Uh, so I decided to use the simpler uh, object detection algorithms that involve some s just machine learning and the hard feature classify was uh, the one of the base algorithms. Its uh, idea is published I think in 2000 or 2001 and basically what's happening there are these feature of the images. You can think of this as just uh, white and black pixels. In grayscale image, there are n never like just white and just black pixels, but you can find this feature on the image. Like here, we have vertical line, horizontal line, diagonal line, and so on. So when you think about it, you can use this feature to detect human face. Uh, this is oversimplification, but that's the actually how does this work. So you have a face of a female here, and you can see that I can be detected as a one that there will be a row of black pixels and below it there will be a row of white pixels. And that's not very good to detect eye, but if you combine it with some other hard features and combine and, and detect them all at once, you can detect the face. So let's say nose could be like uh, one row of vertical white pixels because most of the light will hit the top of your nose and there will be two black, blackish vertical pixels. So if you combine these hard features of eye, mouth, nose, and so on, you could detect successfully human face. And uh, this, this works pretty fast, what is uh, really important for our project. And uh, the main issue with this uh, algorithm is that uh, you can, if, if just uh, this female tilt her head a bit, let's say by some angle, you can realize that these hard features are changed completely. Like there you don't have on the nose vertical lines, there will be diagonal lines and so on. But uh, I wanted to test it uh, because maybe it could be useful for our project. And so my first example was, it, it should be simple because I've never done it before. And second, I wanted to make an example in which uh, this rotation won't, ha won't have impact on my example. So the absolute basic would, would be to just dot detection, just circles, because if you to rotate the circles, you still have a circles. And the results look like this. So what's, ha what's happening here? Uh, to make this machine learning training, uh, when you build OpenCV, you have these utility executables, and they are actually hard feature classifier executable, and input to these uh, executables are positives and negatives. Positives are the images you want to detect, and negatives are images that don't contain the positives. So I had to wrote a small script. Uh, it, when you press any key on your keyboard, on a laptop, it will uh, save from a camera feed image that's currently presented, and saved it in some directory. So when you collect like 500, like several hundred of these images, that will be enough for positives and negatives you can download from the internet, just thousands or several thousand of them. At that point, you have to manually crop them. So this is very tedious work. I had to go through all of these images of dots, crop all of these dots, and then set it as arguments for these executable files that has to train this hard feature classifier. So once everything is done, this can be easily loaded in your Python application and you can do something like this. As you can see, this works quite okay. I try to test it with different angles. Uh, there are some issues you can see detects the edge of the seat in a train. So it's not perfect, but at that point I figure out, okay, this can work. So I wanted to test it now even more. I needed another example. And another example, I 
figure out I should use is letter detection. But almost everyone does letter detection. I had to change it a bit, make it my own example. So I used Arduino and 8 times 8 LED matrix. And uh, every second, this LED matrix should present different letter. And I should make 26, obviously, these hard feature classifiers. And I want to see how well can it detect each of these letters. So just ignore the, the green dots on the face. This, those are face landmark detection. That's something I did afterwards. So just ignore it. So as you can see, there are letters down there. And there are letters up there. Uh, and we get these green dots every time uh, uh, if the confidence level is about 50% that this letter is detected. As you can see, there are a lot of errors. Mainly, it, it, cannot, it can detect the letter. It has some issues, I think, with X and Y and A, but besides, it mainly detects the right letter. But in this example, I figured out, OK, these rotations are really a problem. Once I rotated a bit, it didn't work. And at that point, I figured out, OK, I have to use neural networks. This can be useful in some, some cases, but there are a lot of issues. And as you probably can figure out, you can do a lot of pre-processing here to make this example work like really nice. If I just convert this image to different color space, I don't know if you're familiar with it. If I convert it to HSV color space from a third channel that's V, I can get the most intensive pixels. So I will get these white pixels. And with next steps, I can check if these white pixels have surrounded red pixels. And if that's the case, I can just extract these values and discard 95% of the image. At that point, this detection will work much faster. And I could cheat. I mean, I could detect is, the, uh, is, uh, is for instance, if the, if the P is detected and if the O is detected, I can check if the O is the part of the P. And I can just discard the O. because. P should be detected. If the O has smaller area, I should discard, discard that detection. So you can cheat a lot with pre-processing and post-processing. But my goal is to find how, how well can this object detection work out of the box. So next step, as I said, is uh, usage of neural networks. And you probably have heard about PyTorch or TensorFlow. Those are the most famous ones. But uh, as I said, we work in automotive industry, and I wanted to process as much frames as possible so I can average the val values during these frames and make testing while actually I'm detecting. So I was looking for the fastest algorithm out there, and it looks like it was YOLO. I don't know, maybe something has changed. Uh, and we use YOLO free. That's the newest one. Maybe there is YOLO for, I don't know now. And uh, as that YOLO algorithm is written in Darknet. It's a different framework. It d doesn't have any connection with uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch. So I had to install it and test it. And the first difference uh, compared with hard feature classifiers, uh, now you don't have positive and negatives. You have just a bunch of images on which you have your own object. And when you get these images, now there is this, again, tedious work. You have to go through all of these images and label where is your object. So input for your neural network will be these images. And you have to give it these ranked rectangles. You have to give it where are the position of the ra these rectangles. And there are these useful like applications like label IMG that lets you do this very simple and on easy way. You just make these rectangles, and it will automatically generate textual files which say where are the positions of your object. And as I said, I needed, again, another example, because it would be boring to use it on the same. And I figured out, OK, I should make a beer can detection. And results looked like this. So I took 500 images of the beer cans with my uh, mobile phone. And then I manually labeled all of these. And it took like five hours. So that's why usually people hate working with neural networks, because there is a lot of this tedious work. And then there is a lot of this work when you have to train. And probably your results won't be nice. So you have to change some parameters for your neural network, change some uh, 
maybe change kernels, uh, reduce the size of your image, and so on. And uh, at this point, I figured out, OK, this works quite nicely. You can see I ro I've rotated now the beer can. It still can detect it. And it works quite, f uh, quite nicely. And this is not. This is now done on the on the graphics card. This is GTX 1060, and I don't know can you see, but to process one frame, you need 0 0.06 seconds. So it it works a lot faster than the the previous algorithm. It works uh, pretty nicely for what we need, but we have to now have the graphics card in our algorithm that we should use in a vehicles. And as I said. Uh, because we are u using this automotive industry, one part of the project is now to detect the vehicles because our project had something, some connection with the vehicles that are on the in the traffic. So my next project was to detect the vehicles, basically, and almost everyone does that. So again, I had to change my project to make it more interesting. So I was looking for uh, applications for 3D simulation of uh, for the autonomous driving. I've used several, several, several in a previous company, but all of this, all of those are proprietary. So I found one. It's called the Kala Simulator. It's powered by Unreal Engine and it's sponsored by Intel. So it it works like really nicely. You can use it as just playing around. You can drive a car. And the thing is, it also has Python API. So you can define almost anything, how many participants are in the traffic, how much vehicles are there, what are weather conditions, you can actually define how will your town look like. So this project looks like this. You can see four videos. Each video has different weather conditions. And you're probably thinking now, OK, I have to manually label like thousands of cars. But I cheated here. I downloaded the data set for uh, real cars. And the thing is, uh, uh, these cars, they I think I downloaded from a Stanford University. Uh, labels were prepared for a MATLAB. And it was some kind of a binary file. So I have to read it somehow. And for that, I could use SciPy. And once I got this to kind of readable state, I had to convert it to something the darknet will understand. So I can use it in my own project. Uh, and at that point, when I prepared my data set, trained the neural network, it looked, it worked fine. Uh, but the issue, I don't know, can you see, there is a red Coca-Cola truck and it couldn't detect it. So again, I had to make my data set bigger. I, I needed images of that particular vehicle. So again, I used Snapshot. Because it uses Python API, I can eas easily get this frame buffer, collect 500 images of that particular vehicle, and then again, manually label it. And once I added this to the data set, train new neural network, and I try to detect, at that point, nothing worked. So that, that's the problem with neural networks. Most of it is trial and error. You don't know why doesn't it work now. But the problem was that at some point I figured it out. Like when you give this labeled image to the neural network, you have to label all the objects you want to detect. So I, I took images of a vehicles and I labeled just that car I, I was interested in. But when the neural network is training, it finds all the other vehicles, but because there are no labels, it thinks, OK, there is no car. I, they've mistaken. So I'm actually training neural network not to find the cars. So there are these problems. You cannot find it on the internet. Mo mostly it's kind of you have to dig a lot. And there is a lot of uh, trying, you know, try to figure it out. And when I fixed it, it, it was in a state like this. So basically, these are the, the projects. I hope you find it interesting. And I, I didn't go much in depth with all of these projects, but I didn't touch anything except for Python with this and build a lot of C and CUDA libraries and to actually run this neural network. So basically, that would be it. You have any questions? Yes. Uh, 
you say that you use OpenCV library. Uh, is there some option for some GPU optimization for uh, for OpenCV library in Python? Yeah, I think there is. Okay. I didn't use it, but mostly it's vectorized and it's parallelized. Yes, it's parallelized. So you don't need like okay. in most of case, like images should be. I think at least 4K. That that makes sense. Uh -huh, okay, because I know for C++ uh, during the build process you can um, add some optimization flag for GPU or something like that. And second question is about the example with Arduino. Um, uh, do you try to l run uh, such kind of software on directly on uh, Arduino? Because in this example you just use Arduino for um, um, control this LED display. Did you maybe try to uh, run uh, some kind of image protection? Processing directly on Arduino. No, no, no. Arduino is just for displaying these okay, letters. Okay. Nothing is done on it. I think it's too weak for this. Uh, do you try maybe to move quickly this LED display? Yeah, but it gets this frame anyway, ah, frame. so it works. But on this camera, there will be motion blur, and if there is motion blur, it won't detect it. Okay, it's just completely you. different. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, hello, did you try to detect some uh, complex objects with hard classifiers and did you configure the number of training stages and what uh, the No, results? basically I just gave it the input and it trained, I don't think, I think it was like 15 stages or whatever. I didn't, at that point I didn't have the need for that. After that on my projects I did, you, you could see like the face landmark detection, yes, I, I changed and a lot of pairs. face detection was with HAR classifiers? Yes. Okay, thanks. Hello, just a quick question. Uh, did you try any other libraries besides OpenCV? Uh, for image processing, yeah, for no, it's OpenCV. I've used for, mo for my own projects below because I've done mostly my work in Python, but OpenCV looks like it's, it's faster. Uh, thank you. That's Okay, so thank you.